All right, so everything's relevant to itself. Everything, all the tools up at the top are useful. All of them are uh, not foolproof, but they do come in handy. But what's limiting your your sense of adventure here? Well, it's your imagination. That's what's limiting to your sense of adventure yourself is going in and experimenting using the tools uh, and thinking that there is mistakes. There is no mistakes with this stuff. There is only, you know, making mistakes and then learning from those mistakes. So mistakes are an awesome thing. Uh, don't think, you know, nobody ever makes mistakes in this stuff. And there's an undo button. I don't, I don't want to get, I don't get it. The only bad thing is with Maya, sometimes you can get too far ahead of yourself, made a mistake, and then go all the way through a model and then figure out, wow, I made a mistake. And then it's a really hard thing to get back. So always save in increments, always save, you know, one, two, three. And that'll help you with going back a little bit past the undo. A nice thing about this is if you go save scene as, there is a thing in here. No, let's go file save square box. Incremental save. And incremental save will save you all the time. Uh, for every time you save, it'll save it as one, then two, then three, then four. Okay, this will not automatically save it by any means. You still have to go save. But what will happen is this is saving under my desktop cool shape MB. Okay, so if I need to do that again, whoops. it will now make an incremental save along with that one. So on my desktop, you're going to find a directory called incremental saves. And here's the incremental save. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. Now, there we go. You can get it back. And if I make a change, um, I can go into the one, the two, the three. It's really nice to have an incremental change. The next thing I want to show you in this video is the fact that things are not where they seem to be. Under polygons, there's some useful tools in here, but that's not all of Maya. There's a lot of useful tools. As you've seen in the last one, I showed you a deformer. Later, we're going to get really heavy into deformers, but there's a couple that I want to show you right off the bat that are useful for beginning modelers. The next one is under animation I show you this thing. It is the create lattice tool. In here under the square box I've changed this all to fours. Okay. I'm going to apply this and show you what a lattice is. What I want to do is bend this. Well that would be freaking hard to do, wouldn't it? I mean, if you think about how to bend this shape, um, it would be, I couldn't even fathom it. But in here, I have this lattice. And it has lattice points. All I do is have to right click on the lattice, which is a feat in itself sometimes. Once you get it clicked on, you'll know because it, you'll have the option to go to lattice point. So sometimes it helps to go into an orthographic view to highlight it. And then I can use the move tool to move these lattice points. Bending the object. Okay, then I can use command D to duplicate it. This one has a deformer, this one does not. So that's that's a real powerful command is to lattice something. I, I use lattices so much that uh, because there's no real good way to sculpt things in Maya, we always have to use a deformer to sculpt them. There's this sculpt tool which is just a polygon mashing machine and I'm not going to show it to you in this video, but I would say in most cases I'm creating a lattice around a certain number of vertices and then taking those vertices and then um, taking them a bit further because once you have this once you bend it 
And then once you think about ways you can actually what take it and duplicate face from it. So I'll take it and duplicate this face up, adding it as an object, taking and extruding that up a little bit. Maybe offsetting that. And again, you can create that that wild look I did earlier. But certainly if you're making some kind of like maybe tank tread or something like that, it's a very useful trick. Okay. With the bend, I didn't show you the last thing that I want to kind of show you. Um, here, I'm going to duplicate this over. I'm going to do the same trick I did before. I'm going to combine it and then duplicate with transform. Okay, and then... I'm going to take and move it just slightly and then hit G on the keyboard and make a few of these. What I didn't show is low bound and high bound and that's very important. Okay, so I'm going to combine this together and then go into animation and create a sculpt deformer or nonlinear bend. Okay, again, I have to kind of lay this flat. So I go into this one and I rotate it just a little bit. In this case, I know 90 here and 90 here will give me the results I need to uh, bend it around. Here on the bend, I have low bound and high bound. And this is how it works. What I can do is curve this around, okay, but I can make it so only one side goes down. So in this case, look at that. Okay, so if I took this part and I chose to duplicate it, and you sh you've seen ways for me to take it and duplicate it and then flip it around. Duplicate it. I can duplicate it and then I can scale it in a negative Y I think. Yep. And look at that. Now keep in mind these are higher polygon parts. So now if I chose to maybe take the low bound and high bound a little further I can match up these a little bit better. See how they, I have a curvature of 1.8? If I just made 1 or a 1.5 or something like that, it would have been a lot better and they would have blended together. But you're going to have to figure out that magical number right there through experimentation. So you can make kind of like a tank tread if you wanted to. Now you just have to decide what your first beginning shape is going to look like. All right, so that is using Lattice, and that's using the deformers and everything else together. Um, please move on to the next video.